Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, back with Nova Edge Academics, and this video will be continuing with topic C1, Simple Harmonic Motion Part 2. Um, mind you, this is an HO topic, so if you're an SO, you do not need to watch this, but it wouldn't hurt to watch this as well to uh, get a better understanding of the math behind Simple Harmonic Motion. Now, the purpose, let me say the purpose of this topic first. The purpose of this HO section is to mathematically compute the velocity and acceleration and displacement at a given time okay and this will also lead to being able to calculate the kinetic energy at a given time and potential energy at a given time as well it's until last section we've covered like this diagram right so this thing so we'll be able to basically mathematically compute um this function and uh, yeah that's the entire topic here okay so first i need to talk about phase difference what is a phase difference well if you've noticed from the last video, when I drew the displacement versus time graph, velocity versus time graph, and acceleration versus time graph, they actually had something quite similar, which is first, they were in this sinusoidal function. We call that sinusoidal function. And second, they were just off by a little bit. So for example, we talked about how in simple harmonic motion that acceleration is proportional and opposite to displacement, right? Well, this actually meant that if this was a displacement, this is the acceleration, right? In other way of looking at this is if I shift this, they kind of overlap. I can shift this this way as well, if they overlap. So they're off by a little bit. They're off by a certain amount. And that certain amount is actually called the phase difference, okay? So let me show you how much they're off by. So let me try to show you, okay? So if I move this and try to overlap with the velocity part, they don't look similar. It's like this, uh, right? So essentially, how much do I have to shift? I have to shift by a little bit. If I shift by a little bit, boom, they overlap. Uh, by the way, the amplitude of each graph is not the same uh, because, you know, displacement, that could be like 5 meters. Velocity could be like 10 meters per second, right? So they're not the same, but we're talking about the shift here. So I need to shift by a little bit. How much do I need to shift? I need to shift by just this much. And that that much, I need to be able to quantify it. That's the purpose of this phase difference, okay? I can do the same thing here. Okay, right now, okay, let me start from displacement, bring it down. They are completely opposite. So I need to shift by this much. We call that the phase difference, okay? I'll show you how to quantify that in, actually, I'll show it to you right now. So. For me to get to displacement, I need to shift by a quarter of a period. And again, a quarter of a period. So for me to go from displacement to acceleration, I need to do by t over 2. So let's keep that at the back of our head and now talk about displacement and simple harmonic motion. So the same way as acceleration, we can mathematically model the displacement and velocity. We're going to first start with displacement. The displacement actually looks like this, where x naught is the amplitude. It's the maximum displacement possible. So in this case, it's here. That's x naught, right? And so it's actually a sine function. Okay, and the benefit of this function is that you can actually get the displacement at a certain time. So if I know the time, then I can get the displacement. So what's the displacement at time equals five seconds? We can use this equation to compute that. But here's a problem. If you notice here, the displacement starts from a positive value, right? It starts from a positive value. At t equals zero, at t equals zero, the x is equal to x naught, okay? But if I put t equals zero here, then sine, it becomes zero. So actually, x is equal to zero here. So these two don't match, but you might ask, you told me the whole purpose of this is so that I can actually just plug in the time and find displacement, right? So it's not doing it properly right now. So I actually need to correct it a little bit, or in other words, put a phase shift in it. What does it look like? It looks like this. So I need to shift the graph by a certain amount. And it's important that you're able to find out how much you need to shift by. And by the way, this guy is the unit is in radians. And you might be asking, okay, well, how do I quantify how much I need to shift by? Well, first just draw this one. So x is equal to x zero, 
times by sine. That's just a sine function. We know how a sine function looks like. It looks like this, right? So what I need to shift by is a little bit to the left. How much? Well, it's actually pi over two, pi over two rad. And I need to shift it to the left. So actually positive is fine. Uh, I don't know if you've already learned this in math course, but if I want to shift something to the left, a graph to the left, I add it by that amount in a function. So it actually looks like this, or in this case, let me just do that. Okay, that's how much I need to shift by. Uh, hopefully you've already covered that in your math course by now. Okay, so now we've already established how much I need to shift by. So now I can model it as Boom, now we have the proper function we can use. So in exam, they're not actually gonna give you how much you need to shift by, so you need to be able to uh, know this and uh, put in the right number, okay? All right, so now that we already have the displacement expression, we can actually get the velocity expression quite easily, and how do we do that? We differentiate. Because remember, V is equal to the derivative of X, right? So if I apply the derivative of this, I actually get this. So now it becomes a cosine function, okay? Now, in fact, if I wanna find the acceleration, I can actually do the same thing. And if I do the acceleration and just do the derivative of this one, I get this. I hope you can agree with that in terms of math, right? And hopefully you've already covered uh, derivatives in your math course. If not, when you come back to this before your exam and you're reviewing, you're gonna see this. And what you notice is it looks strikingly similar to what we've already covered here, this before in this uh, previous video. In fact, that's actually true because this part is x, right? We've already established this here. So that means acceleration is equal to negative w squared times x. Acceleration is equal to negative w squared times x okay um, now this one you don't actually need to know and this is not in your data booklet so usually they will never ask you to compute acceleration directly as a function of time they'll probably ask you okay calculate the displacement at that time using this and then you can calculate the acceleration at that displacement okay now one question we usually get is what is the maximum velocity of the system and the maximum velocity well that's when this cosine function here, expression, is equal to one, right? So when that's equal to one, then V naught, which is the maximum velocity, is equal to, boom, right? So it's this expression. So we actually get this e expression here. This is in your data booklet, so you can always use this to compute, okay? So pause the video and give this problem a try using all these things that we've learned so far. All right, so let's do part A. Determine its maximum speed and kinetic energy. So to do maximum speed, I forgot to put it here. Okay, to do the maximum speed, I need two things. I need the amplitude and I need W. They already give us the amplitude, but they don't give us W. So angular frequency we need to calculate. Hopefully you got the same thing. Let's do B. What is the object's displacement? 120 meters per second after it is released from its maximum displacement. Okay, so for me to do this, I need to use this equation, but I actually also need to find this guy first. They're telling me that they released it from the maximum displacement. Right, so they've released it from here and gone like that. So actually, we just need to make sure that x is equal to x naught when t is equal to zero, okay? And that only happens when this is equal to pi over squared, uh, pi over two. You're actually gonna, actually it's, it's probably beneficial to memorize. When the ball is released from this position, this is pi over two. When ball is released from this position, this is zero. And when ball is released from that position, this is minus pi over two. Okay, so I hope you memorize this and then you can use it now. So,
and you should get the same thing as me, which is x is equal to 0 0.57 millimeters. Let's do another problem. Pause the video and give this one a try. All right, so they give us a period and they give us this, the max speed and they want us to calculate its speed two seconds later. Okay, so we can model it as the pendulum starting from the middle and we want to find what happens at t equals two seconds. Okay, so remember that when the pendulum starts right in the middle, then this is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, what is the speed two seconds later? Well, I can do velocity is equal to just that, right? So now I just need to compute W. W is Okay, we also need to know x naught, which I can find from v naught is equal to this. Okay, so last but not least, I get 0 0.51 meters per second. So now let's talk about energy during simple harmonic motion. So now that we've computed what velocity is at a given time, we can also compute kinetic energy at a given time. Of course, because velocity is now equal to this expression, right? So if I were to compute kinetic energy is one over two mv squared, this thing, right? It looks uh, very, very, very long. In fact, you're not going to find this in your data booklet because we actually take a simpler approach. Uh, the time component is just too much. Cosine squared, all that stuff is a little too much. So we're actually going to take the approach of uh, kinetic energy is equal to the total energy of the system minus by its potential energy. Now I want to find the potential energy expression. So the potential energy, well, recall before that for a uh, spring mass system period was given by this. So if I actually rearrange this, this, right? And that's actually equal to W, right? This is actually the same thing for pendulum. So this is spring mass. If I do pendulum, 2 pi over T is equal to G over L, which is equal to this. Now this becomes important because W squared is K over M, or W squared is G squared over, is g over l now i want you to remember this because in the next part we know for spring mass system the potential energy is 1 over 2 kx squared okay let me put that k expression into here so boom Right? So now we actually get the expression of kinetic of potential energy with displacement. So let me just show you. It looks neater like this, right? And we actually know that the at the maximum point, at the maximum displacement, you have the total energy is equal to the potential energy, right? So at max displacement, E total is equal to the same thing, but you're replacing it with the amplitude. Okay, putting these together, we know kinetic energy is equal to E total minus by EP, you get, boom, this is what's in your data booklet. So you have to be able to use these in order to solve problems. Now, one more thing that I'm going to take further is, if you notice here, it looks awfully similar to 1 over 2 mv squared, right? You're just replacing v squared with this guy. Well, that's because v squared is actually equal to that guy. So now you get v is equal to this expression. And now you can actually compute the velocity of the object at a given displacement. So as long as you know where the displacement is, you can calculate the velocity as well. So not just time. Now we have expression in terms of displacement as well. Okay. And you have to be able to use these and compute and do problems. So you know, this topic is all about practice because there's a lot of different expressions and you need to know how to use them effectively. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so let's find the total energy. Okay.
Okay, so right now we don't know W, but we do know the amplitude. So let's find W. Okay, so E total. I hope you got 8.6 times 10 power of negative 3 joules. Okay, or B. When it has a displacement of that, determine its potential energy and kinetic energy. These are just plug in. So potential is. Okay, I hope you got the same thing. Uh, kinetic energy, I can actually just do E total minus EP. So that's just going to be 8.6 minus 3.3. Or I can plug it into this expression. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to give you the same answer. Okay, part C, when its kinetic energy is 2 times 10 power of negative 3, what is its displacement? Okay, so let me just erase this. Just key point is that w is 4.36 okay so arranging this okay plug it in Okay, part D, calculate the velocity of the mass when its displacement is two centimeters. You get plus minus 12.4 meters per second. Why do I have this plus minus? Well, it's because velocity could be either positive or negative. Now, we actually can't determine whether it's positive or negative. You have to just leave it as plus minus. And the reason why is because when the displacement is two, that means the, okay, by the way, here is 3.47. So that's X naught, X equals two and zero. So when, when the displacement is here, Either the velocity could be going this way towards here, or it could be on the verge on the way of coming back down. So we can't really tell which way. So you have to just leave it as positive or negative, okay? E, what is the maximum velocity of the mass? Boom, I hope you got the same thing. So this problem is really good because it breaks down all of the ways in which you can use these uh, equations. So I hope this uh, was a useful video. Next video, we'll be talking about wave models. So we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. We have a lot more lecture style video and content like this in our channel. So feel free to go check it out. Uh, if you're looking for additional guidance, like one-on-one -on -one tutors in IB subjects, SAT, TOK essay, IA's writing, etc., then uh, go to our website at novaedgeacademics.com. Fill out the form and get in touch with us. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.